Are we able to connect it all tonight? Yes, we are. Let's have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, I've had uh, fun this week uh, talking about uh, uh, creation and against um, evolution. Uh, so, uh, Lord, we pray as we wrap things up, it'll be a profitable evening for us this evening now. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Uh, I'm a member of the new Brown Party. If the amount of solar energy is less than the amount of radiation, uh, then uh, the earth cools. But uh, here is uh, our motto, uh, save the earth. It's uh, our only source of chocolate. <laughs> well, that doesn't have anything to do with anything, but um, a little play on the words there. All right, um, title this evening, Learning from Our World. Uh, if uh, you have your Bibles, ultimately we're going to get to Job chapter 12, 7 through 10. But, um, uh, but ask now the beasts. Uh, that's what we're going to see in, in Job. Uh, we go back to Job 12, 7 through 10, and so let me read it to you quickly, and um, we're going to learn what we can learn about God's creation uh, from uh, uh, the Bible. Got to get there to Job 12. There we go. Here's what it says. Uh, but ask now the beasts, and they shall teach thee, and the fowls of the air, and they shall tell thee, or speak to the earth, and it shall teach thee, and the fishes of the sea shall declare unto thee. Uh, it says, Who knoweth not all these that uh, the hand of the Lord hath wrought this? In those hands, in whose hands? is the soul of every living thing uh, that breatheth of all mankind. So, here we go. Um, ask now the beasts. Can beasts teach us anything about God and about God's creation? Well, uh, the answer is yes. Let's see what we can learn from them. Uh, when it says in Job 12, 7, but ask now the beasts, and they shall teach thee, the word is behema, uh, the beast there, properly. It, it means a dumb beast, especially a large uh, quadruped, and, and that means a four-legged beast or animal. Uh, the elephant is a huge quadruped, or has uh, four legs, but he's very unique. Uh, ele elephants can smell water from several miles away, if you can understand that. God's wisdom in, in making the elephants am amazing, uh, all four legs bend forward in the same direction. Uh, it's the only quadruped that is made that way, the four-legged beast that's made that way. God planned this uh, animal to have a huge body, uh, and that body would be too large to uh, live on two legs. Now, uh, we have several other uh, quadrupeds. There's horses and cows, but uh, very interestingly, God designed them uniquely. God designed them differently. A horse rises from the ground on its two front legs first, if you ever watch the horse. And cows rise from the ground uh, with its two hind legs first. That's the way God made them. For this reason, God gave it four uh, pivot points, fulcrums, uh, so that it can rise from the ground easily. God's pretty smart. And it shows uh, in the things that he made. Let's move on to Job chapter 12 now in verse 9. It says, Who knoweth not in all these that the hand of the Lord hath wrought this? Uh, did you know that 
elephants can't jump. All right? Now, let's look at the beasts. Let's consider the giraffe. Uh, 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 Lamrick's theory, uh, a giraffe inherited long necks from short neck ancestors who continually stretched their, ne uh, their necks to reach for food. That's the evolutionary philosophy. That's a bunch of baloney. Um, uh, they, uh, have they found any fossils of short neck giraffes? The answer is no. Now, let's get to Darwin. He was a brilliant man. <clears throat> uh, long necked and short necked giraffes once existed together, Darwin said, but the long necked giraffes had an adaptive advantage. Uh, how, but how did they get a long neck? Well, there are some things Darwin can't explain about the giraffe. I just think the giraffe is a marvelous creation. Um, one amazing characteristic is uh, being able uh, to pump blood all the way up to their brains. It's, they got a lo such a long neck, their hearts are equipped with features to pump the blood as high as necessary. Um, when uh, they bend down, now look at what God did. Couldn't have been evolution. The valves in their neck vessels are shut down and they prevent excess blood from flowing to the brain so that they don't die from high blood pressure. It's very interesting how that works in the little diagram that you see down there that shows about the, the valves that uh, God uses in the giraffe to regulate the blood flow, not a possibility of evolution. Both of these functions would have had to evolve at the same time in order for them to work. Was this a result of random chance mutations that just happened uh, to be beneficial? Uh, absolutely not. And then going on to Job 12, 9 again, who knoweth not uh, in all these that the hand of the Lord hath wrought this? Um, how did giraffes reach the top leaves before they had long necks uh, that evolved? <laughs> uh, one, th <laughs> one theory... <laughs> Well, let's jump that one. I don't think that will work. How do you know? Well, a giraffe can lick inside its own ears. He can, but it doesn't go all the way through. All right, let's look at the hippopotami. That's a plural, or the hippopotamus, if you would. The beasts, and that's what it talks about in Job. So you go to the beasts and the hippopotamus. A lot of people don't realize this, uh, but uh, a hippo is considered to be the most dangerous animal in a Africa because hippos kill more human beings than lions, crocodiles, and snakes. Um, I don't know um, uh, if you know it, but they can run uh, faster than humans. Now, a hippo can run between 19 and 25 miles per hour the fastest man ever on record ran 23.35 miles per hour. The fastest woman, 21.32 miles an hour. That can be done for a short period of time. But the average man between 20 and 26, when they're at their peak, can run about six miles an hour. The average woman about that age uh, can run about five miles per hour. A uh, hippo can outrun them, so can uh, the cousin the rhinoceros there, since that's why hippos are very dangerous and kill more people, as I mentioned, in Africa than lions, crocodiles, or snakes. Um, just uh, as an interesting aside, it's true, uh, hippo milk is pink. Uh, so um, there you go. Now you know something you didn't know before. When hippos are upset, their sweat turns red. Okay, did you know uh, hippos use their sweat as sunscreen? <laughs> okay, there you go. Okay, and uh, hippos are too heavy to swim, 
and they navigate uh, through the water by walking on the bottom. Uh, let's move on to the, to the next animal. We can learn from the animals, as Job says, the brain of a gazelle is cooled by a special cooling system uh, located on the right side of its head. Gazelles and other fast-running animals have uh, a breathing uh, channels, hundreds of small blood vessels spread in the large blood accumulations behind uh, these canals. And it just shows you a little bit, without this cooling system uh, of its blood, g uh, gazelles would faint from the African heat while they were running. And it just is just a little interesting thing. It shows you where uh, it's at in their brain. Job 12, 9 again, who knoweth not, uh, who knoweth not in all these that the uh, hand of the Lord hath wrought this? In other words, God demonstrates it, all right? Uh, when humans want to build something right, uh, they copy their creator. Uh, it's very interesting how that, that, is, that is true. Uh, uh, Biometrics uh, or bio, I don't know, I can't even pronounce it, Im it's imitating, biomimicry uh, is the imitation of models, systems, and elements of nature for the purpose of solving complex human problems. Uh, uh, biomimicry or bio meaning of life or um, mensis meaning to imitate uh, is a new discipline that studies nature's best ideas and then imitates these designs and processes to solve human problems. Uh, and this is the Biomimicry Institute in Missoula, Montana. Uh, went through Missoula uh, just recently, but uh, the crane, um, they use beasts that God uh, developed uh, way back in, in the dinosaurs with counterweights and all that kind of stuff. And here's what they mimicked here. Uh, bridges, uh, the beast shall teach thee uh, you got the Mackinac Bridge down there and how things are, are spread out. And the illustration there is another dinosaur. Uh, and then uh, the, the snorkel, the elephant there, uh, the snorkel idea. And then what's, uh, what's very interesting, snowshoes help us to walk on top of the snow. And where did they come from? The snowshoe rabbit, uh, the wide thing spreads out. Helmets and pads uh, in skateboarding, riding or motorcycle. Well, God thought of all of that first. Uh, when I was going through Texas and Oklahoma, I saw a lot of these dead by the side of the road, armadillos, uh, very interesting. Uh, and then uh, an example of uh, uh, motorhomes, where about that? Well, God thought of it first. How about baby carriers? Where did that come from? Oh, the kangaroo carrying the little joy that came from God first. And then hang gliders, flying squirrels. Uh, I tried to look for Rocky the flying squirrel. You remember the cartoon, some of you are old enough, but God thought of it first. Then we go to uh, Job chapter 12 and verse 7. It says, and the fowls of the air, it says, and they shall tell thee. So we've looked at beasts, now we looked at fowls, and there's a bunch of different kinds of fowls, uh, different uh, beaks for different foods, different beaks for different foods. Uh, you can look at it, different feet for different purposes at all. Uh, you've got some birds with the long beaks for ne nectar, uh, the finch for seeds, the, the vulture, they're carnivores, and, and you've got the blue jay, um, and then for insects, uh, you've got the finch catcher there and the different kinds of feet. Uh, but don't think for a moment uh, they may have been designed that way for a purpose. Um, you know, uh, the evolutionists just say, oh, well, uh, it couldn't have been designed for that way. Well, where do you think the idea came for the design of a helicopter? Uh, the helicopter, the fowl shall teach thee. 
And uh, I should have gotten it up here, but I got beautiful pictures of a, a hummingbird when we were at the, uh, the sapphire mine, mining for sapphires. There is a, a nectar um, a station outside and hummingbirds would come and guess where the helicopter idea came from. They can stand there and they can move this way, this way, so very nicely. And then the dragonfly, very interesting there. The helicopter must also be able to fly forward, climb, cruise at a speed, and then descend and come back into hovering landing. This is the dream of true flight, a feat only achieved in nature by the hummingbird and the dragonfly. And nature has inspired mankind for literally hundreds of years before of the vertical flight machines, uh, now known as helicopters, became a practical reality. That's a quote from the history of helicopter flight. And then here's Woody. Uh, woodpeckers uh, don't have any vocal cords, which uh, means they can't make a sound. Drumming trees with their beaks play an important part in their communication with each other. Uh, up to uh, uh, a thousand g-force occurring hundreds of times for per minute with a woodpecker. I have a dumb woodpecker that comes every spring and starts pecking through my vinyl siding and I go off and shoo him away. Uh, but anyway, uh, but the vibration uh, causes the bugs to crawl down further into the hole. No problem for the woodpecker. Woodpecker has a tongue that is 10 inches long that is covered with glue. Uh, chemicals in his mouth dissolve the glue so he doesn't uh, get a tummy ache, but uh, uh, 10 inches long tongue, uh, you can see how it uh, runs under the skin and it hooks right at the nostrils there. Uh, he can pull it out and, and get bugs out and so on and so forth. Uh, here's a good question. Um, the woodpecker's amazing tongue, uh, is the long tongue beneficial? Well, yes, without the glue and the muscle attached. Uh, has, he has an industrial strength beak so it doesn't uh, fold up like an accordion. It has special shock absorbing system behind the beak. I mean, it's, it's just literally amazing. Uh, the woodpecker's brain is surrounded by a thick plate of spongy bone so he doesn't get a concussion from <laughs> pecking so hard on the wood. I'm serious, this is, it's amazing how God has created things, my friend. We can learn a lot from creation. It has special muscles that other birds just do not have. Uh, it has exceptionally powerful neck muscles, as well you'd have to be. It's kind of like a pile driver there. Uh, it has uh, short, stiff uh, feathers, uh, tail feathers, um, uh, to prop itself up. Uh, perching birds have three toes forward and one backwards. The woodpecker has two uh, forward and two backwards uh, and serve as a clamp. So he can really, uh, because when you're doing your air hammer head here, uh, otherwise you'd knock yourself off the tree. But um, wow, I mean, my God is amazing. Uh, and it's, it's just amazing. Uh, well, <clears throat> what sounds more likely, uh, by accident for no purpose or by design for a purpose? Hmm. Who knoweth not in all these that the hand of the Lord hath wrought this? It's a rhetorical question. Yes, we know. God did it. God did it. God did it. Um, <clears throat> Or, let's move on, speak to the earth, and it shall teach thee. So we come to the earth. Uh, the earth shall teach thee. What can we learn from our earth? Uh, if you spin a planet faster, you increase the wind speed. 
Uh, Jupiter spins rapidly uh, nine hours and 55 uh, minute days. Uh, wind range are at greater than hurricane force. It's the more than hurricane force for Jupiter. Saturn spins rapidly 10 hours and 14 minute days. Uh, the wind speeds average about a thousand miles an hour. Uh, the Earth is spinning at about a thousand miles at the equator. Uh, the Earth's rotation period has been slowing down at exactly the same rate over the last 400 million years, supposedly, says Dr. Hugh Ross. Um, <laughs> a second uh, is added to the clock every uh, 10 to 18 months, uh, Greenwich Mean Time, but regular clocks use days as major, measure, which are growing longer by thousands of a second or more daily uh, as the Earth's rotation slows. If the Earth is slowing down, then that means it used to be going faster. Um, at the rate the Earth has been slowing down, uh, just eight, uh, just 80,000 years ago, the wind speed uh, on the Earth would have been uh, 500 miles per hour, um, and uh, supposedly this is uh, what the National Wor uh, uh, what the National um, Weather Service says, which is a bunch of baloney because. Um, here is the new dinosaur extinction theory, and there's people who really believe this now. Uh, it's going to make you laugh, but um, in the uh, Sun Burnett Gen Earth Science 1987, page uh, uh, 379, the Earth was spinning so fast. <laughs> Excuse me. The wind sent them into orbit. <laughs> A Earth Science book, okay. Yeah, yeah. The Earth isn't just spinning, it is also moving around the sun at 67,000 miles per hour. I mean, it's, it's just, uh, uh, evolution is, is bizarre. Uh, coral reefs, um, here is the Great Barrier Reef. Uh, and the point of the matter is, is it's less than 4,200 years old. Hmm. Hmm. When was the Great Flood? Well, well there you go. Um, the Sahara Desert has a prevailing wind pattern. Uh, uh, this causes the desert to grow, um, and the process is called, uh, very interestingly, desertification. And uh, you can see the, the present extent, or the past extent, excuse me, in the light colored, and then the next color is the present extent, and then the possible extreme, uh, and it's, it's growing. Uh, and guess what? Uh, it's about 4,000 years old that the desert has been growing. Hmm. Magnets lose their strength with time. The Earth magnetic field is getting weaker. Uh, see the Institute of Creation Research, uh, issue number 188. Uh, a strong magnetic field indicates more heat inside the Earth's core. Uh, there would have been too much heat for life to exist on Earth 25,000 uh, years ago. So see, the, the evolution just doesn't make sense. And uh, I used to be a spelunker. Anybody know what a spelunker is? All right, it's a cave explorer. Uh, they, they tell you all kinds of lies uh, about their stalactites. Stalactites are the ones that hold tight to the top. Stalagmite, there's a G in it, that means they come up from the ground. You know, it drips and comes up from the ground. 
But uh, this is Carlsbad Caverns here. A New Mexico's unfinished symphony started, they say, on the sign uh, 250 million years ago. That's what they say because they tell you uh, that stalactites grow about uh, one inch every 2,000 years. I was going to bring my stalactites from my office. I have four different stalactites in my office. Um, uh, how many of you have ever been to the Lincoln Memorial? All right, some of you had. Well, here's a picture. The Lincoln Memorial was built in 1922. This is a picture in 1960. There is 50 inch long stalactites in about 40 years. Hmm, something doesn't add up. Um, huh. This is a bat covered by flowstone in a stalagmite. So, uh, <laughs> uh, that's crazy. A picture taken in 1987 on uh, uh, level five of the mine in Mount Isha, Australia. Uh, the mine was 55 years old at the time. Uh, do you see how long these are uh, coming up here? And there's the miners right there. See that there's the miners and they're inside the mine here. Uh, look at all that. Uh, all this stuff that they tell you uh, can be disproved real easy. I, I, uh, I like this. This is in, in Thermopylae, Wyoming, a hundred year old uh, flowstone formation in Wyoming. Uh, this was taken in 1993 and it's just a hundred years old. And look at how much has built up. Uh, the fact is, the earth cannot be billions of years old. It cannot be billions of years old. Um, the earth says, I'm young after all. Job 12, 9, who knoweth not in all these that the hand of the Lord hath wrought this? The rhetorical question is this. What about plants? So you've got uh, plants, um, uh, that are getting eaten by a worm. So what does God do? Well, uh, he makes a caterpillar wasp and the caterpillar wasp kills the caterpillars that are eating the vegetation. Uh, you got tomatoes and the beetle and, and um, uh, God presents all those things. I love this next one. Uh, we read it again, who knoweth not in all these that the hand of the Lord hath wrought this. Uh, I like these uh, knob cone pines. You see them there. Uh, and it, uh, uh, they have a maximum crushing strength of 5,640 pounds. I mean, they are tight. Uh, Birds and squirrels can't get them open to get the seeds. Sometimes uh, they hold the seeds for 40 years or longer. But here's the issue. Uh, only one thing will cause them to open up and give their seeds. You'll be surprised what it is. I've seen a lot of these the past two years as I've gone out west because the only thing that causes them to open their seeds is a forest fire. You see, uh, in the midst of a forest fire, the cones will open partially enough to emit a gaseous vapor that protects the seeds from the scorching flames. Uh, then, listen to this, when the fire is gone and the tree charged, or charred, excuse me, the cones will finally open and disperse its winged seeds to the forest floor to grow new knob cone pine trees. There's the little seed there, the little seed there, and then you know what? God has reseeded, and I've seen this happen. The places that had been burned over, eventually a new forest springs up to replace the old one. And again, who knoweth not in all these that the hand of the Lord uh, hath wrought this? And then fish, uh, Job 12, verse 8, and the fish of the sea shall declare unto thee. 
Uh, the archer fish is an amazing little fish. Uh, the archer fish are a family of fish uh, known uh, for their, uh, you know, they prey for insects on the land by shooting them down with, with water uh, from their mouth, but also uh, banded archer fish are able to capture prey by jumping out of the water and seizing it uh, from low-hanging branches. Uh, what about the batfish? It plays dead um, when danger is near. It floats motionless on its side um, when it's scared, making it look like a dead leaf floating on the surface of the water. Uh, here's a, a batfish changes its color to camouflage with the bottom. And then where did the idea from the submarine come from? Uh, well, I'll just tell you what, the submarine has special tanks of water that it can be filled to sink and pumped out to raise, but then how many of you have ever heard of the chambered Nautilus? And we have a, a petrified version, fossilized version back there, a chambered Nautilus squid has small chambers which it fills with water to sink and empties out to raise. God thought of it first. Wind, rain, and erosion. Uh, which is more uh, complex, Mount Rushmore or its designer? <laughs> Again, who knoweth not in all these that the hand of the Lord hath wrought this? Revelation 4 Revelation 4, verse 11 says, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure, um, for thy pleasure they are and were created. Uh, to those skeptics uh, on uh, uh, Mars Hill, Paul said, God that made the world and all things therein seeth that he is Lord of heaven and earth. If you make it, you get to be the boss and you get to set the rules. Uh, God should receive the credit for his creation. Uh, very clearly, friends, there are only two types of people in the world. Saved and lost. There is a remedy for being lost. Here it is. Uh, with soul cleansing power, with grace washes white as snow, uh, the blood of the Lamb. 1 John 1, 7. Jesus loves you. Jesus died for you. Jesus wants to forgive your sins. Jesus wants to be your Savior and enter into a personal relationship and be your best friend. Would you like to be saved? Admit you're a sinner. Believe Jesus Christ died for you and rose again. And three, call upon him in prayer. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's God's promise. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Will you be ready when Jesus comes. You only be ready when Jesus comes if you have personally asked the Lord Jesus Christ to come into your life, forgive your sins, and save your soul. If you've never done that, I'd urge you to do that this evening. God doesn't care what religion you are. He wants you to know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. It's not a religion. It's a relationship. And once you get a relationship, get into a good Bible-believing, Bible-preaching church where you can grow. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we're thankful you're the blessed and only creator. Uh, thank you for the wonders that you have done. That's what we've tried to express this week in these presentations. If there's somebody here who doesn't know Christ as their Savior, might this be the evening where they call upon you in their minds in prayer and ask you to come into their life, forgive their sins, and save their soul. Thank you for the refreshments now. Uh, help us to enjoy them in this last night. And we give you the praise. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Uh, scoot down.